Hello friends, welcome to the part 14 of this tutorial series. In this part, we will be working and finishing the home component, both the design and the logic here. So for the design, I will simply uh, go ahead and copy paste the code from my notes. I, as I said, I will not be working on the HTML. It's quite big. And uh, let me first create uh, these functions also in the TypeScript file. So that it will not complain right and just give me a second we copy the code from my notes go to my home component.ts and paste everything here okay so going on the top let me explain it slowly to you guys so on top i have a container which sent other things out the padding of four in the top and bottom direction then i have a row this is the grid system of bootstrap it starts with a row then we have a couple of columns inside those rows so i have two columns with which will uh, occupy six uh, grid uh, i mean grid areas and because each grid has got uh, 12 columns so this will Occupy this div will occupy six columns and this div will occupy six columns remaining six inside this div i have just one one button okay and that will say create new to do and on this second div will have a status to filter the uh, the list of to do's okay so if i save the changes now and if i go back to my to do or my front end close this to is home component list okay it's not declared the uh, uh. so this api service is not there or i mean this method is not there so i'll simply comment out this code okay and this is what it says i'll suppress the type def thing okay again this aps service i'll comment out the code So this call comment out as if now and this API call comment out. Okay, I have to suppress the type def thing. You can change it in the PS lint settings, but I'll not do it for this purpose. Go back to the home component. So this form field and save the changes and see how it looks. This is the final look. So this is the Create new to do button, the drop down. Okay. And here you will have the to do's. And since my I'm looping through this filter to do's here, my filter to do's is blank as if now it's an it's an empty array, as you can see here. So I'm getting nothing. But if I put a title here, say test to do and a description, because that, this is the only two things. It requires test description and the status I believe is uh, open save there you go this is the the look and feel of the to do and this is placed quite near because I think I need to do a bit of styling okay so I'll copy the styles from my notes Go back to the style sheet, paste it there, save, go back to the uh, browser. Now it's nicely spaced. You have all the three options here in progress, completed, open, and filter it. Okay, filter works. No, it doesn't yet. Refresh. So this data will come from my API service and this is the this is a section 
for the fill for the filter and in the in the second row i have single column 6 which is offset by 3 that that it stays in the middle of the container and i'm looping through all the filter to do's i'm not using the actual to do here and that's for a reason because I'm, i will only be manipulating the filter to do's and i will never manipulate the to do's uh, unless and until there is a new to do added or or a to do is deleted maybe from the database i'll, I'll do all the all my operations within the browser i don't want to do any unnecessary api calls for that and I'm using an ng container here to loop through all uh, using the for the ng for directive is because the ng container does not create any additional DOM elements. It's not rendered in the DOM. And uh, here the, uh, I'm using the mat card component with the mat card title, mat card content. Okay, so to show my description here and the title here, then I have a mat form field which is this one. This is the status, and to the right. I have a spacer and then the delete icon. That's it. It's pretty simple. In the component TS file, so I, I injected my API service and the dialog uh, service here, the mat dialog uh, uh, annotator. So in my ng on init, I am fetching the, uh, the, all the to dos from my API service with this method. I will create this method in the next le lesson. And uh, next, whenever there is a change in the filter, so this is the filter change method. I can click here, it will go here. This is the method I created, and it's for the selection change event. Whenever you, you change a selection here, that this event is fired, and that value is stored in this uh, variable, which I am fetching here in this constant, then I'm uh setting the filter to do's to the actual list of to do's then i am with the with the help of this value i'm filtering for all the to do's which match the status of uh this value okay and if if the uh value is none i mean if there is no value that means when you are selecting the all option that will be all my to do's will be loaded back to the filtered to do's and that's why I'm always looping through the filtered to dos and not the actual to dos here. Similarly, uh, here in the status change, that means if you change the status from here, that means you're updating the status of that particular to do. This status change event will be fired. I'm passing in the event value, the task ID, or uh, against which this event is getting fired, and the index of that task in my task array or to do array. I'll name it uh, to do to do ID. Okay. So this is here to do ID. Okay. Again, uh, the API service will be called and it'll send the updated value to the backend database or my API and we'll get a response from there. Really for the for delete. I'll first, uh, if I if I just show you, uh, if you click the delete button here, you'll get this prompt. Okay, do you want to remove the to do? Yes or no? If you click cancel, stay here. If you click OK. Nothing happens as of now because the code is uh, commented out. This will remove the to do from the backend database, and if I receive a success from the backend, then I will remove the to do from the from the main to do's array as well as i will update the filtered to do so that you don't see it in the front end okay so we'll implement all this logic in the next lecture and we'll also see how we can create a dialog box so the dialog box is created with the help of this code so in this code i'm uh, storing a reference to this dialog using this variable and i'm referencing to the to do component so this is the component we will have we will simply uh, i mean design in the next part maybe this will have a width of 500 pixels has a backdrop and the role is dialog all these attributes you can reference to the official documentation here of angular material material go to the dialog section 
maybe in the examples and go to the last one here this is kind of a uh, dialog box we're looking for and if you click on this arrow see the actual code okay this will give you a hint how you can implement a dialog box in your own uh, project it's pretty simple just need a little bit of practice right now if i go, go to my browser and i hit create to do i get this dialog box okay which says empty dialog box which says to do works uh, i at least know that it, the my to do component is being called successfully all right so this pretty much completes the home component and next we will start working on the api service mm -hmm. because we need all these methods there and we will see how we can call our backend because we also need to authorize ourselves Right, so till then, please uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, share this with your friends, put your comments below in the section, uh, comment section, and I'll see you the next time. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye bye.